Hi, this is Gay Pope Payton again, and I'm coming to you with my blog number hmm, seven. I think it's blog number seven. Coming to you with my blog number seven, and I really don't have anything, you know, prepared to say. I don't even have a PSA from my book that I'm really speaking from today. I'm just kind of, you know, shooting from the hip. Um, because I've just been thinking about some stuff lately and um, one of my friends inboxed me a picture of this guy and the link to the picture of him was um, it took me to a page on Facebook and it was this big old corn fed you know I mean he was gorgeous He, I think he had Haiti or something like that Jamaica or something like that he had these long dreads and he was absolutely gorgeous his body was incredible but, and I mean, they call people like that for women, you know, we call that eye candy. You know, men that we love to look at because they are just so incredibly fine and gorgeous. And, but, you know, as I get older, I don't, I don't really want eye candy anymore. I want some heart candy. I want somebody who is going to feed my heart and feed my spirit something that will nourish me, make me smile, something that's sweet to the taste and easy on my heart, not on my eyes. Um, you know, it's like you meet people and they give you this beautifully packaged box of emptiness or even worse, a beautifully packaged box of lies. They present you, you know, they give you this presentation and they send their representative to date you for however long it takes for them to think that they've gotten you to a point where you won't leave the relationship no matter how bad they treat you. And so, you know, but but where is the heart candy? Um, where are the people who are sincere about who they are? Where are the people who really want to have a genuine friendship with someone who wants to share their life with someone and just one person? Where are those people? I mean, where are the, I mean, and I'm not just talking about guys. Don't, please don't, don't get it twisted and think that this is one-sided because I know there are a lot of women who are petty and who are gold diggers and who only want a man for what they can get from him. And I'm not making an excuse for them, but a lot of times that comes from a woman only seeing a man as money. Um, he was a check in the mail. Uh, this man that they never saw, they never had any real life experience with their father. He was just a check in the mail. They knew that he existed because there was this money coming from somewhere. Or they saw this man who came to spend time with their mother. And when they when they left, when they, whenever that man left their house, they know that they had food and they had things that they didn't have before he came there. The light bill was paid or something was, they associated this man with money. And so now as they become adults, they associate men with money. And a lot of times, you know, when these women are really beautiful, you know, guys reach out to those types of women because they want some arm candy. They want something beautiful for other people to look at. And she's empty in her heart and she has, you know, nothing in her purse and probably a little less in her brain. Because, you know, she's not, she's not um, trying to have anything meaningful. She is only with you for what you can provide for her. If you, can, if you lose your money, you're going to lose her. And so it's like, you know, guys, instead of looking for arm candy, you should aspire to meet someone and to find a woman, a wife who is going to be your ride or die life partner. Somebody who... If, if things don't work out between you, you know, she's got her own stuff. So when if things don't work out, the only thing she's going to want from you is your absence. So, you know, it's possible to find somebody who is not after your money. All women are not gold diggers. Um, you know, I, the last thing I'm worried about with a man, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not even a thousandaire. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm making it, you know, I'm, I'm a single parent and, and I'm making it me and my son and I do all right. I make a decent living, but at the same time, I'm not worried about a man's money. I don't really want 
his money. I just don't want him to want mine because whether you believe it or not, male gold diggers are just as prevalent as female gold diggers. And then they hear these songs about the independent woman. They hear these songs about the, you know, from Webby and um, Neo and whoever them, 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 those little guys are singing and rapping about the this independent woman who spoils him and buys things for him. And, you know, it's like the last thing I need is another mouth to feed. My son turned 16 two months ago. He is 6'3", 275 pounds. He wears a men's size 13 shoe and a 46 long suit. I don't need another mouth to feed. So if you, you know, and a lot of times men think that successful women are looking for um, a man who they can control. So they want to control the pocketbook so they can control the man. I want to have a man who loves me so much that he controls himself. I don't want to control a man. I want to be led by my man and I want him to be led by God so that he will be able to love me the way he's supposed to love me and thereby control himself. I want some heart candy. I don't want any eye candy. I like big boys. I do. I've said that before, but it's not about how he looks. It's about how he treats me, how he respects me because I, you know, and I made a joke about this, but you know, sometimes I think that it very well may be true. Sadly. Um, I said that it seems like the heart and the mind of big tall men seems to malfunction. It's like the brain doesn't operate properly. Um, at high altitudes, and if you have too much muscle mass in your chest, then you your heart can't feel anything. Because I mean, sometimes big men, I mean, they they can be th thoughtless and just cruel. I mean, it's just like I'm I'm not sugarcoating. I'm not passing judgment, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I just keep I say that a lot. I mean, even though it's it's on the front of my book, it says I'm not passing judgment. I'm just saying. But that, I'm serious. I'm not passing judgment, and I know all big corn fed men are not thoughtless and cruel. I just know that a big corn fed sensitive man is like finding a needle in a haystack. And that's why one of the reasons why I'm not looking for a man. I'm going to wait until a man who has a heart for God finds me. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to search. I'm not, I'm, I'm available to be found. I am as single as a single woman can be. I have no legal ties to a man. I have no mental or physical ties to a man. I am as single as a single woman can be, but I'm still not looking for a man. You know, women, we have to get in line with God and realize that we're not supposed to find a man. The Bible says when a man findeth a wife, he finds a good thing. That means we are, we're not supposed to be doing the looking. He's supposed to be doing the looking. The reason that we end up in bad situations is because we're looking for a man. And then when we meet this man and he meets the criteria, he seems like he's everything that we've always wanted. He's tall. He's corn fed. He's educated. He has a career. He has one child he has you know it's just like he's he's just he has his life together he has a mortgage he has a car he has you know he has the things that you know people say that's just grown up stuff that's what you're supposed to have you would think right yeah right that's what you're supposed to have there's so many men who don't have that so it, you will be surprised at how many men actually don't have the grown up stuff that you would expect most grown ups to have after the age of 35 um but the thing about it is we see this guy and he looks like everything we want. And so he sees us and we look like everything he wants. So he presents to us and we present to him what we think he wants to see. He presents to us what he thinks we want to see. And then the next thing you know, you are both of you are packaged up in a bundle of lies and a, bu a bundle of fabricated um you know, ideolo I ideologies, you know, it's like the, you're, you're idealizing this person in your mind. They're, you're, you're thinking that this is who he is. And, and, you know, you're thinking that this is who he is because that's who you want him to be. You want him to be that person so badly that you don't know how to open your eyes and see, no, that's not who he is. This is who he is. And who he is showing you, you keep, he keeps showing you who he is, but you love him so much or you want him to be what you want him to be so badly that you don't, you can't even see what he's slapping you in the face with. 
So what we have to do as women, it, we have to wait until a man has a heart, until he has a heart that seeks after God. And when a man has a heart that's seeking after God, then he will have a heart that seeks a woman that he wants to make his wife. And, you know, if he's not, if the guy, if you know that the relationship is not going anywhere, then leave him alone. Guys, if you know that the only thing you want from this woman is, you know, to kick it until you get sick of looking at her, then tell her that. And then let her make the decision as to whether or not she wants to kick it with you. But don't pretend, don't wind her down, her take her on trips and do all the things that you do in a relationship and then try to demote her from significant other to friend with benefits because that's not fair. That's not, you know, I know they say all is fair in love and war, but if you are a child of God, then your spiritual warfare has been won by the price paid by Jesus on the cross and you are not going to be at war with your fellow man who, or your fellow woman who you're supposed to be creating an atmosphere of trust with, not deception. You're not supposed to be deceiving people to try to get as far as you can with them. You are supposed to have a heart after God. And if you have a heart after God, then you won't seek to try to get everything that you can from a person and manipulate them and lie to them and do whatever you got to do to get what you want and then cast them aside. That's, that's not what a child of God does. A child of God seeks God and God does not cast us aside. God cherishes us. He he protects us. He takes care of us. And a man who is going to be my man is going to be someone who leads, loves, protects, and provides. And that man is going to be strong enough to come and get me and lead me through life. He's going to take all this strength that I have and he's going to lovingly harness it and use it to undergird him as he leads me through life. But if I see from the door that you have no potential to be anything more to me. If you, if I know that you don't have the potential to be my life partner, then I'm not going to spend my wheels with you. I'm not going to waste my time. And as soon as I know that you don't have my best interest at heart, you are black history with Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and Harriet Tubman in them. You think it's a game. I don't play. I quit school because of recess. As soon as I realize that you don't have my best interest at heart. And hopefully more people will get to that point and more people will start to seek the relationship that is going to sustain them through time. I mean, you know, it's just like all of this popcorn, you know, love and in and out of love and you falling in and out of love. You got a busted baby up the street. You got a wife, you got a girlfriend and you got, all of, what, how many women do you need? How many women does one man need? actually need I mean who really I'm serious I understand that um you know there were times when when kings had several wives but you ain't you're not a king you work at Walmart what makes you think you get more than one woman they said that men back in, in those days it was a man can and like in the um in certain countries they said a man can have as many wives as he can afford you work for the city how many wives can you afford one, you can't even afford a wife you got, but you want to have a wife, girlfriend, and a busted baby down the street. Really? I mean, come on now. Y'all going to have to, well, y'all got to do better. I mean, really, y'all got to do better. Women, we have to do better. We have to stop letting men who are predators infiltrate our lives. If a man shows you that he is a predatory locust that goes from resource to resource to resource and just just sucks up the resources there and moves on to his next target or his next victim. Once he shows you that's who he is, then let him go. Let him go. It's not, it's not going to get any better. Once he thinks he has you, it's going to get even worse. Your prize is not to be the woman who gets, has a chair left at the end of his musical chairs dating game. That's not a prize. That's, that's not a prize. As a matter of fact, the ones who won were the ones who got away from him. You're not the one who wins if you're the one that ends up with the seat. You finally got it. And then you realize that what you had was not what you really wanted. You just wanted him. You didn't know what it meant to actually have him. You just wanted to have him because you acquired him rather than him acquiring you. So, I don't want any arm candy. I don't want any eye candy. I want some heart candy. I want a man who has a heart after God so that he will have a heart of love because God is love and then he'll have a heart for me. And until I meet him, it's going to be just me. 
I, I don't, I mean, I can do bad by myself, but if you pay attention when you're in certain situations, you'll realize that you're lonelier with this person in your life than you are without them. And if that's your situation, then it's time for you to change your situation. He's not going to change the situation because he's getting everything he wants. She's not going to change the situation. If you're still buying her stuff and she's not giving you what you need, she's getting everything she wants. So she's not going to change the situation. You have to find someone who has a heart that matches up with your heart. Quit looking at arm and eye candy and find some heart candy. I consider myself to be heart candy because I have a heart after God and I want to submit to my man who is submitted to God. And so I feel like as I grow, I've been single for, well, I've been divorced for seven years. And as I grow and I learn more about me and who I am, I become more and more, I, I become more heart candy every day because, you know, people say, you know, you're pretty, but pretty does not last forever. I mean, I know I don't look 45, but I am. I'm 45, almost 45 and a half. And, you know, and so I'm not going to always look like the woman that you met, even though I work out five days a week. I take care of myself. I take care of my skin. I take care of my body. But I'm not going to always look like the woman you met. So if you're after my what I can, how I can feed your eyes and how I can feed your arm and how I look to you, how I look to your friends when I'm standing next to you, then then we're not going to have anything that's going to last for a long period of time. If I'm looking at you and I'm just seeing your broad, massive shoulders and your flat stomach, then when your stomach, when your shoulders start to, uh, gravity starts to hit your shoulder and then start to go down to your belly and you got the Dunlap disease, the belly hanging over your belly, looking like you about to deliver triplets. If my heart is after your body, then when you get to that point where you're not, um, you know, the Adonis that you once were, then it's not going to last past the looks leaving. So my message today is just simple. It's, it's, it's simple. I didn't intend to talk this long because I didn't think I would have this much to say, but look for heart candy, forget arm candy, forget eye candy. Like Prince said in that song, Adore, a long time ago. He said, love's too weak to define just what you mean to me. If God one day struck me blind, your beauty I'd still see. Which means that that's heart candy. That means that your heart loves that person. You know, that's what you want when you go through life. Because life is going to offer you change after change after change. You may lose all your money and not be able to buy her a new Benz next year. Will she still be by your side then? What's going to happen? You have to ask yourself difficult questions. And the only way you can answer those questions is with self-reflection and spending some time alone. Write in your journal. Talk to yourself. Spend some time with you. Because if you spend all of your single time looking for somebody to fill that void, then you're never going to be complete. You're going to take the emptiness that's left from the last relationship into the next relationship, and you're going to get a little more empty each time, and then you won't have anything left to give anybody else. So, anyway, I'm just talking. I'm just rambling, but, I mean, this is just real talk. I don't, I don't know how to sugarcoat the truth. I mean, it's like I run places that sugarcoating the truth is just not. If you want some sugarcoated truth, go to the candy shop. I do not work there. But, you know, just just take what I'm saying to heart and, you know, just think about it and reflect. Because, you know, the, re the responses that I get from people on the radio, the responses that I get from people on my fan page, it's like I can see their perspective. And it's good for me to see their perspective because it can give me, like when men comment on things and they give me their perspective, it's good. Because it gives me a new perspective and I can mutate what I'm thinking to wrap my mind around what they're feeling because I know men have feelings about what I say as well and I receive that and I understand that and that's why I try to make it as dual minded as I can but I can only give my perspective and my perspective is that of a single woman so don't think that I'm beating up on men that I'm bashing men I just want you to understand that this is my perspective this is the only perspective I've had, I have because I've never been a man so just take it to heart heart candy Think about heart candy.
No arm candy, no eye candy. Heart candy. Have a great week. Bye.